Hey guys, this is Man Shark Sub LPs. I'm Sub. This is Crusader Kings 2. And this is Millennia in the Making, Episode 9. We're playing as Duke Otto, as we have been in the previous episodes. But we are no longer Duke Otto of Saxony. Now we are Duke Otto of Brunswick. That happened in the... Let me just start up the time here. But that happened in the last minutes of... Oh, episode 8, when we formed the Duchy of Brunswick at great personal expense. And, uh, yeah, that made that our personal title. So now we are the Duke of Brunswick and Saxony, but Brunswick is our primary title, which we nominated via this thing here. We've just had the knowledge of tolerance in Braunschweig uh, increased to level 1. So if we go to technology, hover over the particular provinces. We can see that tolerance is greater in Braunschweig than it is in Lundberg. So that's a little bit of tech spread right there. Very nice. We should invest in technology at some point. I'm thinking legalism. Legalism is probably the best of the cultural advances at this stage in time. Just because it lets us get more land and less penalties. We're also going to be going for improved keeps in economy advances because that unlocks castle walls too. If we come here to Lundberg we'll see we need that to get the next level of castle walls and to get the next level of castle town not only do we need more castle infrastructure tech but we also need castle walls too. So that'll just increase uh, that will just increase our income a little bit more in Lundberg, which is already f above and beyond the other two. Our marshal has just died after a period of illness. Just generic illness. No worries. So, we've got a little message turning up here, this chair, which means that there is an empty council position. You can see it here. So we click on a point. These are already ordered in the order of their particular, of the appropriate attributes. So you can see here, the best guy that we can get only has a martial skill of 9. He doesn't even want to become martial. The guys who do want to become martial here have a martial skill of 8, which will improve to 9 if we pick them, because we'll be fulfilling their ambition. Let's use this as an opportunity to get some of our bishops to like us more. So we go to the religion tab and we just have a quick check of who likes the Pope more than us. Prince Bishop Eckbert does. Prince Bishop Gottfried does. Bishop Siegfried does. And Bishop Hermann does. So, Hermann, Siegfried, Gottfried, and Eckbert. Well, Hermann was one of those guys. Don't think Heinrich was. But so was Gottfried. But Gottfried does not actually want to become Marshal. He would prefer to be court chaplain. So it's going to be one of these guys. Hermann or Heinrich. Hmm. It is quite a decision. I think Heinrich would be better because he's not, not a glutton. He's diligent. He's just... Yes, we'll pick Heinrich. So he gets an immediate opinion boost because... Uh, well, we just made him marshal. We must have fired him from the council at some point, and we have fulfilled his ambition to become marshal. So now he's at nine. That affects the particular bonuses that he gives you. If you remember, our previous marshal had something like a minus fifteen local revolt risk because he had about fifteen marshal, like marshal skill. Heinrich here only has nine, so he only gives a minus nine revolt risk, and. The percentages are also in impacted. We're going to send him to train troops in Lundberg. It's basically the default for what we'll have a marshal do. Now, we've also disabled the yearly autosave. Oh, looks like the rebellion has ended. Duke Karl the Fat has been imprisoned by King Karlman of East Francia. And the war against the tyranny of King Carlman of East Francia has ended, with the result of King Carlman of East Francia winning. 
So now maybe they'll do something about this uh, de jure war started by King Louis here. That'd be great. Right. Our uh, spy master has just discovered a plot where our wife <coughs> is trying to kill our heir. She's doing that because our heir is not her son. Whereas second in line, Guntram, is. So she's trying to bolster her son's thing up. And what we're going to do is just go to the known plots thing. She does have some backers. So she's 74.2% of the way there. That shouldn't be a threat at this period of time. Because she needs over 100%. Let's just click that away. But she could get it. So, mm, let's see. We could just contact her and say, hey, stop that shit. And she probably would. Because, well, she's our wife. She doesn't have any power. And she doesn't mind. Like, she's actually pretty happy with us. So if we say, hey, come on. Stop that. She probably will. But let's just have a look at the people who are backing her. So, Prince Bishop got fried of Munster. Now, we can't imprison him straight off. We can imprison uh, the, our wife straight off because, you know, she's the leader of a plot. But if we tell him, <coughs> excuse me, if we say stop backing the plot, and if he says no, then we can try and imprison him. Unfortunately, he will say yes. Like, he will just stop the plot. So, you know, it's not all that interesting. And I'm pretty sure because Count Wigbert here likes us, he will also just stop backing the plot. Yeah, and we wouldn't even want to imprison him in the first place. So, we just go to our dear wife and say, Diplomacy, end plot, and yes, she dares not refuse. So, in six days, she will say, Oh, I'm so sorry for plotting to murder your child. And we'll forgive her, because, yep, there we go. I hope you'll find it in you to forgive me. Don't do it again. We do actually have really good tech gain here. We're, we've got a above average learning stat, and we've got good stats in all the other three, particularly martial. That's, that's amazing. We've got 17 martial skill at the moment. It's wonderful. I would like to have this succession thing completely wrapped up, but we really can't influence that too much. We've gone over what these particular succession laws do, but let's have a look at what we need to do to change them. You can only change the succession law once in your lifetime. You need to have reigned for 10 years. Apparently we haven't done that. We must be pretty close. Ah, no. Yep, okay, so this is the thing. We haven't reigned over Brunswick for 10 years. We reigned over Saxony. So we're going to have to wait a little bit before that, that happens. We need to be at peace, there can be no regency, our vassals can't be fighting each other, uh, our vassals can't have negative opinions of you, and we need to fulfill basic criteria, usually to do with having crown authority. We could institute seniority. That would be kind of cool if we were a carling, but we're not, so I'm not particularly interested in that. We can't institute primogeniture, which I would like to do, because uh, the kingdom doesn't have high crown authority. And I can't impact that in any way at this stage in time. We could go elective monarchy, but it's a little chancy. We could go ultimogeniture, but again, that, that can be bad. And we don't particularly care about changing the gender laws. Agnatic Cognatic is probably the best at this stage in time. Because, as you can see here under Absolute Cognatic, we're not Basque, we're not Cafars, and we're not Messalians. And those are quite... You've got to be one of those to be able to do that. So. <coughs> Our demand size has increased. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that already, because uh, there was a little incident with the previous recording where the autosave crashed the game. So I've disabled the yearly autosave, just because, you know, I'm saving pretty regularly anyway. 
But yes, we're a great jerk. So, you know, <laughs> yes, we are. That's given us a little bit more demand size. That may be because we own two duchies or because of something specific to do with the Duchy of Brunswick. Either way, that's great. So, we currently own Lundberg and Braunschweig in our duchy. In our duchy's de jure area, that is. What we should try and do is either own Göttingen, Osnabrück, Oldenburg, or Celle here. We shouldn't try and own Osnabrück because its primary holding is a bishopric. And we can't hold that without uh, like penalties because we're not a bishop. So either Oldenburg, Celle, or Göttingen. Hmm. So Countess Adela here has a husband and three children. She's not really a very viable target for any sort of untoward action as it, as it is. So let's have a look at Chelly. Yep, again, his lineage is pretty much... No, you know, Count Wigbert's lineage is pretty much in the bag. Uh, how about Oldenburg? Hmm. Not as in the bag, but, you know, it's not terrible. However, Count Lofar is our uh, spy master, so we don't particularly want to move against him too much. We could look to other lands, for example. Wow, I swear I disabled that. No, way to make a liar of me. Let me just check that. We'll go to game options. Auto save, interval, never apply. And hopefully that will work. You might have seen in that menu screen that there was actually a difficulty selection. And there's a faction disband. Difficulty selection, it differs from that great lie in the map select screen in that you can pick from very easy all the way up to very hard. There's five steps or so. The main impacts of very easy and easy are that it increases your personal fertility. That's not always the best way to make things easier. It ensures that you'll always have a guy to play. But if you've got like five children, or five sons, all of your titles under Gavelkind are going to get redistributed amongst them. And even under Primogeniture, there's going to be some issues with claimants and people not liking you because of that and all that sort of stuff. So, it's not great. I'm just getting some messages about people being released. Oh, actually, this is important. <laughs> wow. Okay, so... If you remember here in Anhalt, this was a Slavic province until we got our buddy Count Victor here to come in. Count Victor has uh, arrested his mayor for the crime of not being Catholic, apparently, and forced him to convert to Catholicism. That's excellent. Some good Catholics. If he could do the same with... The, no, every everybody there is Catholic. That's excellent. That's wonderful. Ah, praise be. So what we could do is try and expand our realm on the external side of things. Even if we need to like look at taking more territory. Oh, nope, we've knocked up our wife. Good on us. Maybe it'll be a daughter this time so we can fulfill that little ambition for her. This war is looking a little bit skeptical. Okay, let's see. Again, the Bishop of Magdeburg has been accused of being a heretic. Pretty sure he's already got a... Yep, we already branded him as a heretic. So, uh, of course he's a heretic. Now he really hates us because we did that twice. But, we can take our chaplain away from there because his work is done. And let's just see if there's something that we can do with him. So let's just go to our vassal listing. Yep, yeah, oh, our uh, bishops really don't like us that much. Let me just see, this guy would give us 19. This guy would give us 7.6, 17.4, and 15.4. However, Prince Bishop Eckbert is our chancellor, so... 
while he is in Baden to improve diplomatic relations, he is also in charge of this place. So what we're going to do is we're going to see how this works. We're going to improve religious relations in Osnabrück. And hopefully that will have the, d the desired effect. Meanwhile, we just wait for our technology to slowly improve. It'd be good if our spy master could get a few more of those events popping up. Anyway, we could look to expand within the realm of East Francia before the king outlaws into vassal warfare. Could happen. And we'd mainly do that by attacking the Duke of Thuringia here. This fellow. We can't do that advert. Ugh. So the king has already outlawed us declaring war on our fellow vassals. So what we would have to do is just... Wow, that's a demon child. He is possessed. That's wonderful. Who would inherit? Countess Hedwig here, who is the Countess of Thuringian. We're just scheming slightly here. And if she inherits... Well, let me see. Let me just check the actual inheritance list. Hedwig von Thuringian. That's his sister here. Or half-sister. Well, well, who knows. Then Adalbert Baben Babenberger. And then Popo Babenberger. Let me just check that. Is that... Yes, here's Adalbert Babenberger and... Popo Babenberger. He already has a wife. We're going to just check if we can marry Popo to someone. No, we can't. What about betrothals? Popo? Okay, so we could betroth Popo to someone. He is seven years old, and we could betroth him to my daughter. Now, he'll do that, or well, his dad will allow that to happen. What happens if we click matrilineal? No, he is apparently still too high in the line of succession. That is somewhat annoying. Hmm. Okay, so what we're going to try and do... Alright, we see here that the duchy is under Agnatic Cognatic Gavel Kind. And the individual counties, if we just check on this guy, same thing. So, if we look at this, we can see the current first three in the line of succession. But just going from that, if we kill them down the line, so if we kill the Duke here, Duke Bruno, which is an excellent name, then Hedwig von Furingen becomes Duke. That's this girl here. Then if we kill her, Adalbert Babinger becomes uh, the Duke. That's uh, her son. If we kill him, Popo Babinger, her second son, will become Duke. Now, if we've killed them down that particular line, Inge Babinger should then become Duchess. Now, she's 11 years old. Let's just have a little check here. Uh, she's not too bad. She's cruel, she's charitable, she's honest, so she's got a good diplomacy stat, which is something you need to look for in a potential wife. She's not very good at learning. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of a uh, gamble here and betroth our son, Ludolf, to Inge Babinger. There's not too much of an age difference either, so the fertility isn't going to be an issue. Uh, she'll be 18 when he's able to marry her. And yes, while he would prefer a matrilineal marriage, we're not going to give him that. And, and let's see if that's actually... Hmm, that may not have actually worked. Let me just... 
Okay, we don't see that because Count Popo here is the guy. There we are. He has decided to accept the offer of betrothal or suggestion. So you see here, they're not married, they're betrothed. When they both reach majority, which is 16 years old, we'll get a little pop-up here saying betrothed can marry and we can elect to marry them at that point. We've just had a couple of people show up in court. From Scotland. Relatives, I guess. Uh, Morgan Mac Girak has arrived at court. Morag Mac Mora Morgan has arrived at court. These are all good Catholics. And we're going to get some messages if they, you know, move around a little bit. Ethne Mac Girak has arrived at court. She is wounded for some reason. Donald Mac Garrick has arrived at court. Nice beard. Nice baldness. Good stuff. Malbride Mac Garrick has arrived at court. He's got 14 stewardship. He's actually better than Gottschalk. We'll just let them sort out their differences. <laughs> and they're already doing that. Um, Malbride Mac Garrick claims he would be a better Chancellor than Prince Bishop Eckbert. He has 13... Diplomacy, Prince Bishop has 12. The difference here, and the reason why we just don't give the highest guy the thing, is that the Prince Bishop here rules the Prince Bishop Rick. So, give him a chance. We'll just see what happens here. And we're really just waiting for uh, our... Uh, what is it? Improved keeps to increase. The economy tech is the slowest one to gain for us because we have a fairly or comparatively low stewardship trait as opposed to our diplomacy and martial stats. Particularly if you look at the uh, state stats for that. <coughs> so before all that excitement just happened, we were looking at how to expand and we've gotten a little bit of a potential expansion going on. We're going to have to just wait a little bit. See how things go. Once this regency ends, Duke Bruno may have quite a lot of negative opinion of him because he is possessed. And, well, people don't particularly like people who are demon-possessed. And we may have instituted a bit of a power play where we can get some assassina assassinations going on. Some count somewhere has been imprisoned by the king for reasons. Anyway, we were looking at expanding possibilities. If we look at our ultimate goal, the Holy Roman Empire, we can see we hold lands that aren't actually part of it. We've got lands that are part of the uh, Scandinavian Empire or the Wendish Empire here. The Duchy of Saxony is part of the Wendish Empire the county of Hamburg and the county of Bremen are part of Scandinavia. So, ideally we would try and expand to the east. Unfortunately, that's all Catholic-held land, so it's a little bit more difficult to do that. But the Norse... The Norse hold Holland. Huh... And Galray, well, well, not the county of Galray, but the duchy of Galray. So, if we wanted to be really ballsy about things, we'd come over here to Jarl Haraldoffer and we'd say, declare war for Gelder. And you can see here, this would actually give us two provinces. Uh, what's this? Ostfriesland and Friesland. He's currently rebelling against his liege. We can see here he's defending against King Louis the Great in King Louis the Great's war to revoke Ostfriesland. And nearby Norse rulers might also ask to join Jarl Hraudoffer. So if we just check here, we can see nearby Norse rulers are these dudes here. The dark grey is Norse. The light uh, patches, which you can see here in, what is this, Braunschweig and Shaland. They indicate holy sites for that particular religion. If we click on a Catholic province, you can see that sw switches, so Koln is a holy site of Catholicism. That impacts on moral authority and stuff. But, you know, we're not in such a great position to try and change that. 
Yeah, they still don't like us trying to, you know, be vassals over them. If we look at the reasons, we're trying to just say, hey, be my vassal. You know, I'm a good guy, all that sort of stuff. If we look at the reasons here, we start off at negative two points for base reluctance. If we work up the uh, order here, because he likes us a little bit, we get plus one point. Because we're only one step of rank above him, we're a duke, he's a count, there's a minus three penalty. Because we're not the de jure liege of his realm, if you can see here, this is Brunswick, this is Gelrair, nothing to do there. If we were king of Frisia, Frisia, then he would be more likely to accept. Also, if we were Duke of Gelrair, maybe he would be more likely to accept there. Additionally, because we are very powerful, you know, he's a single count holder, we hold two duchies and, well, a lot of land, we have plus five. Which, if my calculations are right, gives us a net of minus two, so that's a no. We could send him a bit of a gift, increase his opinion of us, but that's not going to be enough to get over a minus two penalty. At most, that will get us to minus one. So let's just continue on checking our technology. If you forget about your technology growth, we may see it in a moment with uh, the culture advances. Some other dude got imprisoned by the king, great. If you can invest in any of these technologies, so if I had above 211.4 culture tech, you get a little message up here saying, hey, hey, invest, spend your tech points. And that's quite handy. See, we could hold a summer fair of a moment because we have 25 gold. And because it's a particular time of uh, year, we could also go on a pilgrimage. Hmm. Going on a pilgrimage should get us extra piety and maybe open up some event stuff. Whereas holding a summer fair gives us a bit more prestige. And... I believe reduces or increases opinion of us. We're honestly doing quite fine for opinion. The lowest opinion of us is 41, and that's from the Bishop of Gera. And well, bishops are fine to have low opinion of. They don't rebel most of the time. The only thing you've got to worry about is whether they like the Pope more than you and therefore send their money and levies to the Pope. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, so let's just think about this. We could try and expand it over here. We don't actually have a Cassus Belli to declare war on Count Weichmann here. And similarly, we don't have one on the Bishop here. We've got one on this guy. That was the Holy War. We don't have one on this guy because, well, he's, he's the king. We could offer to join his war. Mm, well, we could try, but he won't let us because we cannot join our current enemy's wars. Uh, let's have a look at some other things that we could do. We've still got the... Uh, well, it's the Petty Kingdom of Zealand here. It's really a duchy title. But we could declare war for Holstein. Now, that's because it's part of a separate duchy. This is the actual duchy up here. They're just holding this... Uh, I guess, in excess, if you will. But they have quite a lot of men. And because the king here, well, the petty king, owns both of these provinces, he can immediately raise about 950 guys. And that's without his vassals. This guy will raise about 300. It's a close call even before we start getting into other Norse rulers joining in. This is part of the, hmm, let's just check this, in the independent realms map. The petty kingdom of Shelland owns this particular area. Yes, yeah, so King Sidagar's snake in the eye of Shelland. He probably got that, uh, through a legitimate, that name through a legitimate, um, thing, and not through some sort of euphemism. 
anyway, we've got the Cassus Belli of the Holy War for Holstein, which again brings in the problem with more Norse rulers joining in. Can have a look at Laxine here. Laxine is currently owned by Chief Lodzimiras of Laxine. He has no Leech Lord, he has no allies. But if we declare a Holy War on him, which is the only one that we've got, other Slavic rulers nearby, which is all of these guys here, could join in. And additionally, we have very poor supply in that particular area. We could try looking at the Duchy of Sorbs. We get a Holy War for Brandenburg, or we get a Holy War for Messian. Messen. But again, Holy Wars have a problem where nearby Slavic rulers may join in. And they probably would. Like, the only reason why they wouldn't join in is if they were already at war with the guy who we attack. So, what we're going to do is try and get a little bit of expansion going on somewhere. Mm, this is quite quite technical. I apologize if watching me make decisions is somewhat boring, but, you know, that's how it is. Okay, I've I think I've made a decision here. More land is always good, even if it isn't part of the de jure Holy Roman Empire. So, looking at the duchies that we already have, well, parts of, Cole and Holstein, I think it's a good idea to try and restrict these guys a little bit. Cole in particular, because Cole is part of East Francia, so that, that could be quite useful for us. So... What we're going to do is send our Chancellor down here to fabricate a claim. He only has an 8% chance of fabricating a claim per year, and there's a almost a 3% chance that the Noble finds him and gets kind of pissed at us for doing it. That's alright. So we'll see what he does. Ultimately, if we get this uh, particular province, we may be able to use it to solve our secession issues. No promises, and, well, basically, we'd, by doing that, what we'd be doing is saying, Guntram, you're now a priest. Priests are removed from the line of succession. And while we could probably do that already, if I remember right, we just go to find a guy, Albrecht here. Yeah, we can tell Albrecht, you know, you must take the vows, you must become a monk, you may no longer inherit anything. He couldn't anyway because he's lowborn. So we could do that. And he's not going to be very, you know, nice on that. But that could be something that we can do with Count or with Guntram. He's not a count of anything yet. And if he's a prince Oh sorry, if he's a prince bishop then that means that we still have some sort of benefit from him being a little finger. This technology is really increasing so slowly. We get a lot of military tech. Normally military tech doesn't increase as fast because you get it from winning battles as well. But we're actually pretty good. Pretty good for that, yeah. Our knowledge of town infrastructure in Braunschweig, which is not our capital, has increased to level 1. So if we check here, they can now build city walls. I'm going to rely on Rudolf here, because he has a lot of money to do that himself. And yeah, so... Ah, oh, well, that's interesting. We've just had a daughter. We're going to call her Winfrieda. And that's wonderful. So our wife is no longer pregnant. And we have five glorious children. Two hearty sons. Let's just see how Ludolf's uh, education is going. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Hmm. 
and his wife his future wife's education is coming along quite nicely she is brave yes they will make quite the pair when uh, they eventually come of age uh, slight warning the marriage out of a bet betrothal can be cancelled or the father can say no that suddenly become a much worse deal we will not like him if he does such a thing but you know however and before we end the episode I've just noticed that the war down here is coming along quite nicely for us we still control the the target uh, Shies, Schweiz so we're getting a little bit of a tick from that, but we've also won some fairly significant battles. Uh, you can see here the biggest one, the Battle of Engelberg, was, let's see, 4,200 guys on their side, 3,300 on our side, and we just slaughtered them. wonder why. Count Fibolt, their leader, only has 11, but he also has some really, really good uh, leadership traits. Yeah, that's exceptional. I don't know why he would have lost. Unless... No, our guy was significantly worse. Six, no stats, he's cruel, defensive, but you know, no stats there. But yeah, that's, that's pretty good. So we can expect this uh, war to end moment, like in a, in a bit of time. And that'll be good. That'll give us... It'll give us nothing. Not personally. And it'll give our kingdom nothing. Except King Carlman might get a little bit more prestige. And if he really smashes him, he might get a bit more money. In which case he could pay back this uh, thing where he's lent money to the Jews. Very interesting. Anyway, yes. I think that's a good point to end episode 9. So... As always, if you have any questions, comments, statements of fact, feel free to leave a comment. Drop me a like if uh, you did like it. And yeah, I've been Sub. You've been yourselves. Later.